Oh, here we go. All right, guys, for anybody who happens to be watching or comes across, um, we're just going to be BSing and talking a little bit about everything under the sun, uh, literally. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, Mercury retrograde, coming into the new moon, coming into cancer. Um, and these ladies and gentlemen know a lot more about that than I do. But we're going to be talking about other things, too. We have crystals. Um, four of us got new crystals, crystal skulls. The history behind that. Um, and, you know, and John's going to be talking about Lucifer. So I am just like, I'm pumped and ready to go. So um, anybody who wants to jump in about... Um, uh, you know what's going on with the Mercury retrograde? I know, I know, I'm going crazy with the the last couple of days. I was doing fine, but the last couple of days have been crazy. Hi, my baby. Hi, you know, you know about this stuff. You're, you're the uh, the astrology person. You want to give us a little lead on it. Okay. The way Mercury retrograde works is that it um from the Earth it appears that Merc it, the Mercury gets to a certain point where it looks like it slows down and goes reverse. And during this particular time. Since Mercury rules communication, all communication just goes wonky, for lack of a better word. So, you know, you have electronics start messing up. You have big communication errors with other people. Um, you buy things that you shouldn't have bought. You you just do a lot of stuff that <laughs> that you shouldn't be doing. Now, okay, I've had all three of those things happen to me <laughs> already. <laughs> <laughs> That's what always happens, but there are some people who are born either born under Mercury retrograde itself, or depending on where Mercury is placed in their um in their natal chart compared to where their sun sign is, that it actually has the opposite effects where it gives them a boost. Like people who are born in Mercury retrograde, this is the best time for us. <laughs> I'm saying us. <laughs> it's the best time for, it's the best time for us because we normally we always analyze and we go with the flow when things happen, we pick it up quicker and analyze the situation quicker to figure out what's going on before we get way too deep in it. And then we know to sit back and just relax and pay attention to what's going on. But yeah, then, um, so Mercury retrograde and the way everything is going on, just don't be surprised if there's a lot of arguments, if there's just miscommunication, if people just have attitudes for no reason. If you come home with like six bags of clothes and you only meant to buy a bag and a half, um, <laughs> You know, all of a sudden you want to buy that car and knowing darn well you only got two sitting in the bank, you you have no damn payment, you try to work it out. Like it's just it's stuff like that that Mercury retrograde will mess with you. Um as far as communicating, you might get a lot of ideas that seem good at the time, but the practicality of them coming true may not be so good. You know, you may be like fifty years old, seven hundred pounds, someone someone wanna be an acrobat or something and really think that it's best for everything. Yeah, yeah. That, you can do, that you can pull it off, right? In yeah. your mind, you're like, Yeah, I, oh yeah, I'm I'm a superstar. I could do that. Yeah. No, and I, I think also too that it's 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 supposed to you know, you have to take the cue and the cue is step back from everything, you know, kind of yes. calm everything down, chill out the cell phone, chill out with the emailing. It's really, I think it's going to, it kind of forces your hand and makes you sit back and just say, you know what, let me do something I know I haven't done in a while. You know what, let me go for a jog. I haven't done that in centuries, you know, um, let, let me go hiking. Let me spend time with my kids. You know, I think it just makes you, um, you know, just really kind of step things back a little bit and slow your roll. I mean, you know, and, and really there's, uh, you know, there's not a whole lot you can do anyway except except take it easy. And I'm going to try yeah, to get John about, back. What about creativity? Like, uh, you know, That's working on creative projects, not, not necessarily making it new, but maybe something you've been thinking about for a while and, you know, like... You know, is that, is that like something that's cool to work on? Like, I don't, I don't really know that much. So, you well, right now is the best time to go with the flow. The main thing in Mercury retrograde is that it's really not against anybody. It's only against the people who've been calling stuff into their life, and they're too attached to things around them. So, if you know how to go with the flow, then work with the creativity that's coming in. I wouldn't say at this point put your um. You know, start investing in a business, but at least start getting your ideas down. If you're making a logo, make a logo. Um, if you're drawing, if you're doing art, now would be a great time to do art to see what comes out. If you're doing poetry to see what comes out. So it depends on certain parts of um, creativity. Yeah, definitely. Because I've been working on, like, totally redoing my website. Like, I'm like, I'm like, redid it all. I changed it. I mean, I'm just totally different. But then I'm like, okay, do I put it up in the new moon? Like, this is, like, practical stuff. Like, do I post it on Monday? Because I've been like, and then the that was my initial 
wanting to do it because new moons, new seeds, this and that. And then my well, girlfriend goes, are you crazy? It's Mercury retrograde. Uh, well, but it's new moon. So what takes precedence when, when you have something like that? When you have something like, well, for, for what you do, since you tap into the Akashic Records, what you would do, you would want to do it on Monday because Monday is robot intuition, so that's a great day. The new yep. moon, this new moon is under cancer, so that's also a great day. And you could probably that's find funny. a planetary hour, which is like uh, either Mercury, Venus, or Jupiter to, um, to open up, to, to actually like just uh, pu publish the web website and to make sure it has all the planetary alignments. And what it is, is it'll carry the energy of a Mercury retrograde, but with you tapping in Akashi Records, You'll be able to get get into where people hide because Mercury retrograde really just brings up the things that people hide. So you'll be able to tap into the things that people hide to help them more. So yeah, you can definitely do that. Well, okay. See, that's that's what I thought. That's great. So well, that's good. Wait, if you're talking about going and revamping something, though, um, that is very that's like a super excellent thing to do during Mercury retrograde mm -hmm. because Mercury retrograde is all about going back and rethinking things you've already done. And revamping the way they are. Oh, okay. Cool. I have to move this okay. camera down. Sorry, it's bothering me. All right, well, that makes sense then, because I was in my records today and I'm like, okay, do I do this on Monday? Do I not do this on Monday? And they were like, go with what you first intuitively thought. So I guess also Mercury retrograde is, is you know, also then make me double think things like, oh, do, do, do I, you know, <laughs> like, wait, let me think about it again. You know, should I do it again? And they're just like, go with the flow. Go with your first initial thought and not with the information that you receive from the outside. Like someone else said, oh, it's a retrograde. You can't do it. And I'm thinking, oh, well, no, I think I can. And now, yeah. <laughs> so I think it's about, yeah, well, you know, and then you start doubting, like, oh, my God, I don't want to, you know, like, Put bad juju on my website, you know, type of thing. I know, right? Set it, off, you know? set it off on the wrong foot when you're trying to revamp everything. Yeah, and it's, you know, really some cool stuff and new things. I mean, things that I had thought about, but I, you know, was just like a day ago, I just sat there to like 2 o'clock in the morning redoing the whole thing. I'm like, I love it. This is great. So so that that's good advice. I, I thank you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Give advice to others that are working on something that may be similar. All right, guys. Uh, all good. All right. So we lost John, but we're trying. Well, for some reason, it won't let me resend the link, so I asked them if they can try and get him on. I don't know. Um, and so, Marion, you were going to talk a little bit about uh, can going into cancer. Okay. <laughs> oh, just whatever. We were just talking uh, about whatever okay. you were just talking about before. Oh, no. Well, what I was talking about actually is that all of these um, – all of this stuff that uh, how the new moon is in cancer and all of these emotional energies um, are opening up. It's, it's multi-layered. Everything to me is coming to me is multi-layered, multi-dimensions. There's multi-meanings. Um, for instance, I was doing a rainbow healing and um, I was just commenting earlier that um, how when I saw my client, I saw her higher self go in a multi-dimension pulling from different dimensions her other parts of herself to create oneness for her but what that does now that we're in this cancer emotional period is basically she's going to have to assimilate any issues that were in those dimensions resolve it at a higher level to be able to integrate it with her at this level here. I'm like, damn, poor girl. You know, that's a lot of work, you know. But that's what we're being called to do. That is the work of multidimension. So now we're not just working at the problems at this point. We're dealing with all the stuff on different planes. And, of course, it's not only problems. It's the benefits. So let's we look at the other side of the coin as to the benefits of all these wonders that exist in the multi-dimensions um, where perhaps you are that author and writer that you want to be or you are, uh, into this, into this. you know, uh, you know, in spiritual light worker, a leading and, and a being a leader. And so all of those things are creating your, um, you know, place of a uh, 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 place of study, uh, 
you know, of, of where like-minded people can come and, and explore their intellect and their ideas and free flow of information, you know, just whatever it is, whatever it is that is your dream, right. those are seen. And what, what I liked what Stuart Pierce said is that if you have, if you have issues in this dimension, you know, you can kind of pull from the other one for support and for yes. drawing in whatever things, you know, because in our other dimensions, we're already successful in many of yes. them. We've yes. already attained our goals. We've already achieved our goals. And so we can kind of just pull from that and say, okay, I'm already successful over here. So I'm going to pull that into my into this 3D. And I thought that was really fascinating. But I wanted to give a shout out to Raven Hollywell. How, I hope I'm saying her name wrong. I I'm, I'm hope I'm saying it right. Raven Hollywell or Hollywell? <laughs> Hi, hope I'm saying your name right. I'm sorry, but um, no. So I thought that was I thought that was really fascinating. And then um, I think we should um, show off our our crystals, guys, because I, oh. I I can't wait. I know I wanted to talk about other stuff first, but um, we all got some either crystal skulls or the Andara crystal. And Alora, talk a little about because I know people know about the crystal skulls a little bit, but talk about this amazing Andara. These Andara crystals are off the hook. Okay, <clears throat> I'm actually going to do a video about these later in the week so that people, other people who want to purchase can um, know all the information. But so there are, first let me just say there are a lot of fakes out there. You cannot go to eBay and buy these. Um, people sell them on eBay, but it's not the real deal. Um, so basically there was a Choctaw medicine woman by the name of Lady Nellie. And she found these crystals on her land. Um, now they are crystal glass. They are a type of glass. But they are over 100,000 years old. Some estimate that they're a quarter of a million years old. Wow. And that they've been under the earth. There's also another theory, um, and actually it was in a channeled message from Thoth, um, that these are not the exact pieces that were around uh, that long ago, but they are energetically tied to the pieces that were. So um, it could, they could be 250,000 years old, or they could just energetically be tied. Um, I, I don't know. I I tend to believe they're that old because when you hold them, the energy is just so like, I almost got ill from this thing um, in the first hour that I had it. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, um, and the way these work is uh, Carrie Waters. She's the person I bought it from and she directly buys hers from Mickey Magic. Lady Nellie died a few years ago, and when she died, she left the Andaras in the care of Mickey Magic. Mickey Magic has been in books like um, Sacred Contracts by Carolyn Miss. He's one of the oh. archetypes oh. in there. Um, so if you read uh, that book, um, you can also find his story online. But um, it, he's, I mean, it's a, it's a profound story about how he came to his spirituality. But, um, yeah, so he's the keeper of the Andaras, and she gets them directly from him. And if you ever, you know, want to verify her credentials, you're welcome to go to Mickey Magic and ask him about her. Um, and she has a website and a Facebook page. Um, her website is watershealingheart.com. And if you just search Andara through Facebook, you'll find her page. But this is the one that I got. And I don't know if you can. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. And if you look, really? it's got um, bubbles all in it, effervescence, which Glammy, you know, is... Yeah, it's, uh, it's, an, it's what's called an anhydro, which just makes it, of course, even more majestic because that's water that's been trapped in there for who knows how long, maybe thousands of years. And, you know, since it's aqua colored and then you have water trapped in it, I mean, it's just like total water element. And, and I, well, well, and not only that, but... What's so special about these pieces of glass in particular is that they're monatomic. And what that means is they at atomically, they spin at a much more rapid, higher rate and frequency than normal crystals do. And so, like, I don't know if you guys have heard of Ethereum gold, like Ethereum metals. Mm. Um, yes. Okay, Ethereum is what these are. 
Um, these are just what happens when it's heated to a specific, you know, to a higher temperature. So these are actually a conglomeration of Ethereum metals that have hardened, forming this glass. That's pretty cool. That's so cool. I'm going to have to get me one. You got to do that. <laughs> yeah, you know, we all want one now, right? It's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, they come in all different colors, and each color, I mean... Oh, it's I thought normal. they were all like blue green. I thought they were. No, all, oh no! You no, can, I got to look at them. I fell in love with the uh, what was it? The ice one and all the ice, like the fiery the red. The ice. I fell in love with those two. Oh, ooh, okay, okay. Yeah, all right, we got John back. Yay, yeah. John. <laughs> all right, so John, just real quick, we were talking a little bit about the, you know, Mercury sorry about that. My computer messed up. Oh, it's fine. Uh, Mercury retrograde. Anything you want to throw in about new moon or what's going on astrologically? Go for it. Um. Well, I know in general, uh, um, with a lot of vacation. What? Oh, Mercury retrograde or Mercury. Uh, new moon. Things that you can do, or you know, what 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 you know about it. Well, um, yeah, basically, like I said, oh, uh, when it comes to Mercury, it has to do with a lot of communication and stuff like that. Basically, um, when it's in retrograde, it has the opposite effect. So uh, this time, uh, especially for spirit people, it's a lot harder to communicate during this time. And if you notice, you, like if you have any, you know, more traffic, um, you know, just a lot of um, uh, just bad communication, you know, like that type of stuff tends to happen during Mercury retrograde. Mm -hmm. um, but... New Moon Cancer, I know, I, I can't really, look, I mean, I don't know too much about that, but I know there is a Grand Water Train, I think, coming up soon, I believe, so next week or so, but um, I know a lot of water energy, so, like, uh, a lot of people will follow their intuition, um, you know, and there's just been, you know, just a lot of water energy um, everywhere, because I know that recently, you know, during, like, a few weeks ago, you know, it was raining a lot, and that had to do with it. Yeah, and that's so funny because, um, first of all, we were just telling Marion about, she was just talking about um, trying to make a decision about something and going with her intuition. And, you know, Daya said, you know, Mondays are great for that. So, it, and then Alora was talking about uh, a crystal that she bought, and it, it's an anhydro, which is that the water is trapped inside of it. So we're totally uh, oh. in, in the water element right now. I mean, unbelievable. So, oh, so, all right. So let's show our, let's show our little crystal skulls, guys. Yep. Rainy. Oh my God! And mine, um, Marion did. We did a session with her. She's a girl, and her name is Rose Amorous. And Amorous means um, promise from God. You know that's Unikite, Glammy. You're yeah, it's Unikite. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's like the friendship stone. Oh, it's the friendship stone. Yeah. It's, oh. um, you you give it to like you can give it to a friend to. Um, grow and cultivate a deep friendship. Oh, nice. But well, she's not giving that away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll be friends. I'll be friends with it, but it's you not send it over. <laughs> but, what's, what's and the, and the thing is, uh, you know, that we're talking about uh, Marion and Daya and I, I guess, you know, Marion can hear the crystal skulls talk. And so oh, yeah. they communicate with each other every time they get together. And then so Daya and Marion and I are going to do like a Skype call and have them all kind of communicate with each other. And, and um, you know, so they'll give each, per, each one of each other a piece of information and they'll share that. And then that helps you, the owner of the Crystal Skull, um, because they can, they can kind of, you know, get more information to help you in whatever it is that you're trying to do spiritually. And so, uh, Marion, why don't you say, talk a little bit about like what yours, what your skulls were saying? I know yours, one of yours was. Mine saying, are like, wait, 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 wait. You know, it's it sounds really strange that they talk to you, but you know, crystals do talk, and it's funny because um, they they really relate to children. My daughter comes up, she picks it up, you know, she's eight, and she goes like this. She goes, "Oh, he's from the ground. He's very in the middle of the ground. Well, he is, yeah." I mean, you know, this is how, she, you know, at her level she describes it. So these, this uh, particular one is called Tiger Iron. So it is a combination of Tiger Eye, of course, because there you see, like, the striations of the gold. And it has red jasper and um, I believe it's uh, hematite as well. 
So this one to me, this is the one that has had sessions directly with a skull and his name is Max. Look, and he even likes my jewelry. He's like swinging my ring around. Um, the crystal skull's name is Max and um, there's a lady named, uh, I think it's her name is Joanna Parks, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so she travels around with this skull. I got right. the paper that was sent to me. And he is an ancient skull uh, found in the 1900s, and he's worked with a Tibetan monk, and now he is with this lady, and she travels around the world with him so that others who have crystal skulls can, they they sit like in a circle, you could create a crystal grid, and information is channeled from Atlantis and Lemuria, um, and probably Starseed Origins, I'm sure, to the other skulls that they are with. And um, they, they're they just so fascinating because when you hold them, they have a special vibration. This this for, this is the first one I, I got, and this is fluorite. So it's got the blues and the greens and purple and rainbow colors. And um, recently I've been using it a lot with the rainbow energy and the Path to Bliss readings because he told me he's a healer. Now it's funny. Um, I've heard names for some skulls. A friend of mine has like nine of them. So um, I was yes. able to identify some of the names for her, but mine haven't spoken to me yet in their names. Um, I have an idea that this one in particular, I, I got the idea that it was from the late Atlantean period um, and was one of the ones that went into Glastonbury to uh, start, uh, you know, to continue Atlantis and Glastonbury. Now, the new skull, the information I got that he is very, very old, um, wisdom-wise, uh, works at really high uh, vibratory levels, um, and is also, Tiger Iron is also known. Um, for prosperity, for, isn't it? Or abundance? For abundance, for holding abundance. So, the, that I'm looking for. That's what we want to do. We want to okay. hold abundance. We want to hold on to it <laughs> so it doesn't <laughs> go anywhere. Goodness gracious. I but mean, if you've never yeah. held a skull or never gone, like when you see them, you'll just know. It's like the Andara stone that, uh -oh. you know, if they choose you. Well, the skull, yeah. it's the same with the skulls. They choose you. And they're like, take me home. You have to buy this one. This mm -hmm. one was in the middle of three other skulls. I didn't even look at the other ones, and I just pointed to the lady. I go, I gotta have that one. Just, just get it out. I just gotta have this one. And, and, and then he told you, didn't he say, "Buy me"? Or yeah, he was like, "Buy me, 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 me." I just like, could, I have to get him out like right now. You know, I gotta take him with me. Oh, so, I and I didn't even go to that store. Look, I didn't even know she had skulls. When then I just saw it. It was like I just zoomed in, focused on it. I go, okay, I have to have this one. Oh, you're so lucky. I wish I could. I, know, I don't know. I know Daya, that brat. She'll probably be talking to hers in like a week, and I'll be the only one. It won't be. I'm like, okay, Daya, tell me what it says. Marion, tell me what she's saying, you know? So we definitely have to, um, to check it out later because I, um, I told you I felt like it had a, a Roman Greco. She had a Roman Greco feel to her. So yes. um, we'll definitely have to explore that. Before I forget, thank God. All right, the card is in front of me. This is for Marion real quick. This card... Uh, I, I feel like you have to work with him again. Down. Oh, oh my gosh. Are you kidding? Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Okay, so you have to work with him again. You haven't worked with him in a while. so No, I haven't. Uh, he popped up. He never pops up in my reading. Never. When I shuffle my cards, it never pops out. And yesterday it popped out, and I was like, okay, that's for Marion, so I got to let her know. Oh, um, wow. And then, okay, so, Alora, I know um, you wanted, there was something that you wanted to talk about, and I saw, like, you messaged me, and, of course, you know, I'm so crazy busy, and I don't know um, what, what it was that you had wanted to talk about, but... Um, I think that if, if you could, um, if you don't remember, then maybe you could talk a little bit more about Soul, or, about soul Origins. Yeah, because I'm sitting here trying to think. I'm like, hmm. Well, I know. I mean, I, I'm like, oh, let me go back in my phone. Let me, let me, let me look at my phone. <laughs> well, I did pull a card for each of us, so. Oh, yeah. sweet. Oh, let's do that. Let's do that. <laughs> I, got, I got my cards, too. Okay. Okay, so I did them in order of how we're on this screen. That's cool. Nice. Okay, so this is Marion's. Ooh, oh, baby. Oh, oh baby. girl. Baby, baby, baby. Oh, I'll take that. I'll take that, uh, too. 
Um, so this, um, it says touch, exchange, connection. Um, now, this can mean a physical man that has some of the aspects of pan, but um, I think it has a lot to do with um, touch therapies. Because oh. it has to do with like massage and healing with touch and things like that. I touch him. Getting into what? <laughs> I said I touch him. <laughs> touch. Bring him on. <laughs> so you might be getting into more of that if you haven't already. Yeah, well, that's what I was doing this morning. Was the I, I've actually been working with someone who has cancer and doing the rainbow healing for her. So mm -hmm. I really. You know, it's kind of, I've been actually trying to do it every day or every other day with them to just constantly keep them at this energized level of high vibration. And uh, yeah, that works. That, I, I love that. They're telling you keep doing it. Yeah, they're saying, yeah. Yeah, I love that. Uh, this one's mine and I think it's funny. Like, <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> come to the light, Alora. Come to the light. That oh, is so funny, you know. The funny thing is, though, is it's like about ancestors and generational shift. And I have been freaking out because I turned thirty this year, and I'm like, I do not want to get old. <laughs> oh, I get girl, over it. I hear that. I hear that. Oh, it's all about don't freak out. It'll be okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just wait till you hit your late thirties. Right. Yeah. That's yeah, what yeah. happened. That's when it hit me. My late thirties. I was just like, "What?" This is Glammy's. So this is really interesting. Dragon. Dragon pet. Pet. Wow. So yeah. this says communication between species, animals, pets, magical companions, and guardianship. So do you have like a new animal totem or no, guardian? I I feel like um, I've been getting messages about dragons for the past couple months which is weird because I'm not like into all of that like anybody who talks about draconians and dragons and you know as a fire element I'm just like I've never been it, it just doesn't jive with me but it doesn't like with anything else it doesn't matter because they don't give a fuck they're just like this is what it is this is you're working with this right now whether you, you you know whether you're you know you get it or you don't that's what's there it's just like birds I don't like birds I'm not into them but I'm telling you when I freaking she's, just, fight, she's just mother nature boy oh I tell my you. God. No, no no I have tried to do videos in my car okay because they freaking they dive right in front of my windshield, right in front of my car, and they pull up at the last second. And this is every day now. Before it used to be only right after the equinox, the spring equinox, and and September. Now it's every day. And so and my son told me he's like my he's like mom, get the iPad and record it because he, he they can't believe like how many freaking now I got squirrels running in front of my car I'm like are you kidding me you know and I will break for animals so problem, you know because I'm not gonna fucking hit it and it's like please God I'm like telling them please don't do that I don't want to hit an animal you know but they're like attacking me like every day and I'm just like I don't like you leave me alone well no, like, definitely you definitely got one trying to communicate with you, and now is probably a good time to okay. communicate. Back. Well, I needed all the help I can get, so that's, that's awesome. And Daya, what is going on with you? Everything. <laughs> Everything. Everything. Ooh, nice. Open what? What does it say? You're Dia. going to the light, Daya. No, not. Mm -mm. Really? Alan, what? what does it say? It says magical help is on the way, golden gift. But this one's about. I want to see. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> but this one, this is the Deer Queen, and she's all about shape shifting and empathy and yeah. sexual feminine energy, like getting your groove back. <laughs> I have a little empathy. I, I, I have a little empathy. I have an issue with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, She's Lord. like, I got enough kids. No. <laughs> yeah, <I was> like, <laughs> grew hey, back. John, can you hear Where me? did it go? <laughs> like, my groove is fine. That's why my tubes are tied. You can hear <laughs> You can hear <laughs> Yeah, I can hear you. Sorry, my, my computer is really acting up. That's and, like, fine. Computer. She, she picked a card that. for everyone, so she's going to show you your card. 
<laughs> What's that? It says, once was innocent, knowledge means change. So Ooh. the oh. actual, um, like, this is all about how your magical knowledge is going to grow tenfold, but you're going to have to change to become, to grow into that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was talking about that yesterday, remember? <laughs> yeah, we were talking about that earlier. How convenient. How convenient. All right, so okay. I'm going to go in order, too, and the first <laughs> one that I got for Marion is victory. Our game is fun. It says, um, your prayers have been heard and answered. Have faith. Um, okay, so let's see if I can do. And you guys feel free to pull too. Oh, I'm pulling. I got cool ones. I've been. I think this week okay. I've been called for tarot cards. I don't know why. Like I pulled out all my tarot to do readings for. for oh, I have year. like four decks in front of me right now, and I usually just keep one. So. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Tarot cards do. <laughs> Okay, here we go. This is for Alara. I love the colors in this freaking card, and it's by it's a My man. Is that telling me to get my ass back to my book? It is. It says yep. focus <laughs> on your highest priorities. I will help you get organized and motivated. So now you know who to talk to. Yeah, he's actually. I have a um um who like a Lisa Beachy meditation from Metatron. And he brings in clarity. It's like seven minutes. I always use it before I do the acoustics when I'm going to do readings. It's it's a real quick, you know, a, a quick fix because it, it really it really hooks you up. It's it's really yeah. good. And and you know the guided we all we just don't have time to do our own meditation. So guided is the way to go. And we love Lisa Beachy. Yeah. That woman is off the hook. So this one's for Daya. Let's see if we get it up there. Creative writing. Cool. She has a, I love that she's got a wand in her hand. Beautiful. And it says, it's Archangel Gabrielle, and it says, make time to write, do write down your thoughts in a journal, or pen an article, or write a book. All right, so, Diane. I, I think this is for you about maybe blogging, or um, writing, you know, starting to write down the stuff that you do, like everything that you do, like as far as magical, and you know, that... You know, along those lines. Wait a minute. Did you just skip yourself? <laughs> huh? You did. You, you skipped, skipped yourself. yourself. Oh. Yeah, man, you skipped yourself. That, that writing's for you. Writing's for you. Oh, <laughs> girl. Oh, hello. <laughs> I, don't that, but I don't know why I always get that, and I, I'm just not getting. Well, maybe you guys can help me out. You're I supposed to blog. We've I talked about this. <laughs> We've talked about, yeah, uh-huh, give me the face. You're like, no, I don't want to blog. I don't like to blog. You've got to blog. That's what ah. it is. All right, so we know what that one is. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <better>. <laughs> I thought it was funny. She's trying to push it off on Daya. No, but she's been, getting, she's been getting on me to write down everything that I do anyway because she knows that I don't come out the closet with everything that I do. She's like, you need to come yeah, out the closet so it's, with it's, everything. It's, no. That one's kind of for both of us. So for you, Daya, I got two cards. Uh, clear your space. Um, so, you know, just make sure that you're, you know, you're protecting yourself and you're, you're protecting, you're enforcing that, you know, make sure that you might need a little extra something, something there. Uh, um, and it says, get rid of clutter, clear the energy around you, and use feng shui. Mm. Oh, my God. I've been doing that all weekend. I've been <gasps> rearranging everything. Oh, thank you. Oh, so, yeah, good. All right. So, and the other card, very interesting, clairsentience with Archangel Raguel. And oh, that's empathy. Burning. <laughs> it, oh, it is. It says, notice your recurring physical, but it's empathy. It's about you um, taking your emotional feelings, and um, that's those are messages. So, like, if you're feeling something, that those are messages from from the higher source. And it says, notice your recurring physical and emotional feelings as they signify divine guidance. So it's just basically, if you sense something and it makes you feel a certain way, that's them talking to you and telling you. You know, divine guidance. All right, so let me see if I can pull one for. Oh, wow, that one came right over. Wow. This one flipped right out. I didn't even have to do anything for no, John. Oh, look at that. Oh, dude. And that goes well with the card you pulled for Alora, with that Alora pulled for him. 
Uh -huh. uh, yeah, it does. And it's definitely, it's taking inventory, uh, Archangel Jeremiah, take inventory of your life and resolve to change or heal anything that's unbalanced. And we, uh, oh man, so we'll have to, hopefully we'll, he'll get back on and, um, he's yeah. on, he just can't see oh, Okay, good. All right. So that's, that was a, that was crazy. Cause that totally goes with what you were saying, Laura. So um, it's good to see we got our mojo going. Okay, so I'm working with the, I love the, the colors of this deck, the Ciro Marchetti, the Gateway to the Divine, to the Legacy of the Divine Tarot. Uh, I have and that one. For, uh, oh, this is for myself. I forgot I'm number one. Okay. Uh, I was going to give it to Alora. Well, I'll take this one too. I have the Nine of Coins. I'm like, damn, she's so lucky. Abundance. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh, you know, like right. it's music. Let me tell you, I'm ready. I'm I love that she has the. This looks like a phoenix or like a pheasant or something. Look at that bird. You can see. I think it's a phoenix. It's a phoenix. It's like it? a baby it's phoenix. True. And I, I've been getting messages about phoenix lately. So I guess I'm in the middle of this transformation, and you know, transforming into my abundance is. I, I guess how I take it. And these are my like my favorite colors. Magenta, of course, when I'm working the color therapy, is the highest spiritual. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the blue or the the indigo of you know the intuition, the third eye, and all that good stuff. But um, well, Alora, I don't know you're you're gonna you're gonna get your groove on with this very uh, wonderful man who's uh, going to bring messages to you. And, you know, it's so funny because, you know, since you've got your Andorra that you get the Knight of Cups because, you know, it's all about relationships and this uh, deep inner quality of emotional connections. Mm -hmm. Is that an underwater it, shot? Is that an underwater? And this is like a, a stingray. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's, um, that's amazing. I mean, everything girls, water around you everywhere. Yeah, so very deep, deep emotions too, and emotional connection, and just fluidity. And so are we talking in the physical, or are we talking in another realm here? <laughs> Maybe both. Um, I'm, both. I'm thinking. I'm thinking it's also. I'm thinking it's in this realm. I'm okay. This realm. Well, I hope it's my fiance because he will be really pissed. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Or, you know, or it could be. It could be. You know, just somebody who comes in as a guide. You know, like somebody who, yeah. yeah. Well, it also could be your connection to the unconscious because it is on the, the water level. Or perhaps maybe he is finding, you know, when people live with us and they work with us and they become, in, they come into our sphere, they, they start, you know, connecting. I mean, look what's, you know, with Jenny. Jenny didn't, you know, I mean, she's a, she's always been a dreamer. But she really didn't start connecting all the pieces till she moved into the house with me and started, you know, just and being more. around me. So he may pick up more on his emotions and intuitions as he's more with you. It's only logical that that would happen. Yeah, so, he already um, he already has prophetic dreams. So there you go, there you go. <laughs> all right. So for Debbie, I got the Eight of Cups. I actually really like this card because I think I he's love that card. I love the back. And I love that it has like a separation. So, um, and going into, you've got the goddess symbol, the full moon. But what it means is you're in this transition phase, leaving behind. And I know you're going to new things. And I have a really good feeling that uh, the new things that you're you're looking towards um, are are really going to be taking you forward. I, I have that that feeling, that new channel that you're working on, all that yeah. stuff. That's 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 you. It's that's who you are and who you're meant to. Wow. And of course, it's water, and we know Yamaya is with you. So, oh, yeah. beautiful. And then for Daya, I got the six of swords. So I guess um, <laughs> now, it's, yeah, you know, now is the time to, you know, kind of take a stock of where you're going on your journey. You know, it's the rest period, but it's time to go in and you know focus in on on your intuition and your thoughts and you're you're being guided but it's funny cuz as for you the, the light is always behind and not I know <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm right behind you. She's, I'm going, she's going into the darkness, but there's a little light just right behind her. So that's a perfect card. Oh my god. I'm just glad there's no more sex. <laughs> But that, I mean, I, that card also can indicate um, moving out of stormy waters and into calmer ones. So if you've had something, some drama going on, it's over. It's been a bunch of, you know, Allure, it's been a bunch of drama. <laughs> so it's behind you. <laughs> it's all behind you. It was a learning lesson. Yeah. And you're over it. And you're moving yeah. forward, you know, yeah. so. And for, and for John, look what, look what came out for him, the moon. Oh, wow. Oh, that's beautiful. I love oh my gosh, this card. Those cards this is are the most gorgeous, gorgeous card. Wow. So again, him with the new moon, all of these uh, you know, going within, all these new changes for him. I think it goes right along with the other cards that, that you guys pulled for him. That he and, and it's funny because here is Toth on either side of her. Oh so, wow. He probably has to go into some pretty, uh, you know, into old and ancient Egypt information, Lemuria. All about that. So I know that's it, perfect. You know, all that good stuff. That's him. So wow. he, he's going to be working with that. So that was fun. So I guess it's my turn. I didn't it is your cards. turn. I didn't do cards. I pulled the wrong going to be like, oh, oh no, what, why the hell? All, right. all they're doing is doing cards. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I started, after I pulled them, I started to pull them because I didn't like mine too much. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> So the first one is, uh, you can see it. This one's not through. Not through. I'm probably, I say everything wrong. Whoa, back up, back up. Uh -uh. There you go. Up. There we go. <laughs> the first one's not through. This is for you, Marianne. It's really all about, um, Basically, what I'm getting from this is telling you just to be patient. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> That's the story of my life. Yeah, you don't understand. Since I was 16, it tells me to be patient. I'm going to be dead, and I'll be patient. <laughs> <laughs> so you are, I'm, I'm hearing now, 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 now. And it's just like, slow down. Now what's coming. But even if, and even though we understand that all is now, you still got to give it the time frame when this 3D room to manifest. So just be patient. Um, if anybody watching, I do not read the rooms traditionally. I just want to put that out there right now. Yeah, yeah. Hi, John. John's back. Yay. I know, poor John's in and out. John's going to have to, he's going to have to watch for his cards. He's going to have to watch this again so he can see what came up for him. Yeah. Yeah. So for Laura, I got, um, wait a minute. Is this right? The star camera. I don't know the right camera angle. That's dark clothes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, like the lightning bolt looking there, yeah, right there. Yeah, that's this is kind of like the lightning bolt, but this is um, a, this is a wise, a, a, a wise. It's like three of them had the same names, always messed with the pronunciation. But basically, this one is saying um, new enlightenment, but also some destruction. So that basically, the new information that you're getting is going to play with your mind a little bit based on the old things that uh, um, you already know. So it's going to be some new information to come in, so make you say, "Well, wait, that's that's wait, hold up, that's not what I." Wait, wait a minute now. Like, make, make it slow down <laughs> and think about it. So that's what that one is. <laughs> oh, that's so new because I'm always like, wait, wait a minute. This does not make sense. That's the word I kept hearing. I kept hearing the word, wait, wait, hold up, wait, wait. <laughs> so, so the one I pulled for Glammy, this is Thory Saw, which, uh, oh, wait, is that the right? That might be the right angle. My finger. Oh, that's right. Anyway, it's um there there you go. That's the best way to look at it. There you go. all is all about um protection. So basically, this is saying is that you're well protected right now. Whatever you're about to do, you're protected. You're being guided. Really? Um, that goes with the dragon's pet card. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> that wow, that's crazy. And this one is mine. This is Uru's. Which basically kind of go with y'all saying that I need to just hone it down. Uh, basically, Uru's for me is all about manifestation. So basically, go with y'all say with coming out the closet or what I do. Uh, like, because I move people around me, I do people I know online, but to build up more clientele instead of the ones that I just normally have and just basically jump all the way out the closet. Right, <laughs> come all the way out, yeah. girlfriend. Yeah. And then the last one I got um, is Issa. And Issa is one of my favorite rooms. But this last one I got is Issa. Issa really is um, it's normally about restriction and constriction, but for, but what actually what I got for him is that even though it's constriction, it's actually refining him. Like he's learning new information that's going to uh, redefine structure and stuff like that. That's and what we're doing. And, and bringing more exactly, information. Yeah. Like that's a, perfect. It's like a new period. 
Wow, that's perfect for what with the other cards that we drew for him. John, we're drawing cards for you like crazy. Guys, hey, you bet. we can see them. Yeah. Sorry, I'm back now. I yeah, swear to God, Mercury yeah. Retrograde is getting to me. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> You're going to have to watch this Being again. Bad communication. See everything that we pulled from. But, oh, and I want to let you know the person we got the comment from is Joel from, he used to be on, um, oh, Black Your Mic. Um, Joel from. <laughs> Joel from Global Witches, and so that's who that other person was that I mentioned. That's his uh, alias. So I was like, "Hi, Joel." All right, so I'm I'm running with this. I'm gonna I want to do more cards for everybody. <laughs> Anybody, you guys want to talk about something? Some go for it. Oh wait a minute, what? I got the cards. Oh. <gasps> I'm scared. <laughs> well, that first, apparently first is Marion. Um, I pulled out Ace of Pentacles. Ooh. Ace of Pentacles basically means, um, first pick, contentment, felicity, um, ecstasy, also, um, speedy intelligence. So, and it means gold. So, usually gold and alchemy has to do with, like, you know, um, turning lead into gold means turning, you know, your shadow self to your higher self, and also means, you know, turning... Negative to positive, um, poverty to abundance, you know, stuff like that. That's what gold really represents. So, whatever, if you ever see in the future something that represents that, then, you know. And next, I had Alora, had Ace of Swords. <laughs> Basically, Ace of Swords, Triumph. I have all this written out. Triumph, the X. Excessive degree in everything, conquest, triumph, or force. A great force of in love as well as in hatred. <laughs> I am the queen of swords, by the way, in case anybody was curious. Oh, wow. Cool. Good job, Joel. Bro, that's not Joel. Stop. I mean, John. I'm sorry. I got Joel <laughs> on my brain. It's okay. It's okay. Um, next, we got Glammy, and she had the moon. <laughs> Which kind of makes sense because that fits you perfectly, actually. Oh, thank you. Mm, the moon, I love but, it. Um, the moon actually actually means oh, you have some hidden enemies, uh, danger, calamity, and darkness, mm -hmm. and terror. Yep. So maybe you have some, I don't know, whatever's laying around that you might have had a problem with for a while or something you need to get rid of. Yeah. And also um, deception. Yeah, yeah, I just had, that's so funny. You're right, on because, um, block the mic for a second. Um, because, uh, Marion got, um, worked with someone who's phenomenal and did a clearing for me. And, uh, yeah, got, got rid of a lot of stuff that people would, had trying to throw at me, uh, mm -hmm. as far as witchcraft. So I was like, woohoo. So very right on, John. Well, maybe that's why you have so much protection around you, too. Yeah, I have to, yeah. And we have Daya. And you got... One, you got Seven of Pentacles. Uh-huh. And basically, Seven of Pentacles means you are... There are externally contradictory in a main... Okay, business, money, and barter is basically like what that represents. And also, um, quarrel, integrity, and I don't know how to pronounce this word, but purgation. Hmm. I don't know, yeah, I don't know what purgation is, but you have a lot of, um, it says innocence as well, and, it's, and it says you may have anxiety about money. Don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's right for you, but that's what I pulled out. Maybe it means something. I don't know about the anxiety part, but it go everything else go with everything. Me needing need to just make more videos about what I do. I get, I get it. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I pulled again. So I I pulled from the ascended <laughs> masters because I wanted to see who are who should. This is about. Who you, who you need to be working with and what you need to kind of incorporate, not necessarily what you would normally resonate with. That's what I'm getting. So, of course. Hang on a second, Glammy. Uh, uh -huh. Marianne, is your mic muted? 
Because we can't hear you. I think sometimes when John gets on, I noticed before, it t it's a delay when Marion talks. Oh, man. Oh, she said, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. What can you do? All right. So, Marion, this is for you. This uh, is. Oh, wait, hold up. <laughs> what? What? We got an extra person. <laughs> we got another John. <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh, all right. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. So, and we got Epona with working with Crystal, you know, and definitely working with crystals more. So, I think this definitely has to do with the skulls. What I love is that you can't see it, but she's holding um, a geode of uh, amethyst. So, just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. All right. And this is for Alora. Now, remember, this is what you have to work with. Um, and it says, this is um, Jesus with um, open your heart to love. And so oh. for, for me, this is more about meditating and or, or working with um, the divine compassion, like the lady of compassion, like Quan Jin or, you know, um, because that's, that's kind of like um, where we do like Reiki and where we do, you know, where you do healing from is you have to take from, uh, you have to come from the compassion and um, unconditional love. And so, um, and what I love is that, you know, Marion always mentions this. There's a butterfly on that sheep right there. So for me, that's like innocence and transformation. So, And what's interesting about that is <clears throat> during this shift, um, I've been getting a lot of messages about vulnerability mm. and like being more vulnerable. And, it, you know, and for somebody who's a queen of swords, we don't do vulnerable. We don't do it. <laughs> no, it's like you and Dahlia are perfect for each other. And well, I'm, the king, I'm actually the king of swords. I'm actually the queen of swords. So. Yeah, all the women in my family are queen of swords. Like I'm the more, you know, I'm just I'm I'm the more uh, compassionate one. Black yeah, light. Okay, for me, Archangel Michael, you can do it. <laughs> that means you can blog. You can uh, do it. <laughs> I, just, I hate typing. If somebody else would type for me, I would blog. I don't want to be bothered with it. Oh my God, Daya, you are gonna hate this card. You are gonna hate it, but I'm telling you, this is what this is what you have to work with. Okay, she's gonna love this. No more cards. Choose peace. Choose what? Choose peace. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Yog Yogananda. Oh, uh -uh. she knows how to say Pramahansa Yogananda. And so you know, this is also just working with um, you know your energies. Because um, when I see this card for me, um, it's about Qigong, and Qigong is just about getting your your qi, your chi going, or your qi going, or your life force, your chakras going. And so that's that's the other message I'm getting for this is just keep working with your chakras. Oh and, Lord, Jaya and I got peace and love. You, yeah, you guys need some work. <laughs> Um, and then for John, if you saw the other cards, you would totally understand this one. This one is listen with um, Man, Manjushri, Manjushri. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to say it. But um, when you look at the other, when you see the other cards that were picked for you, you're just going through. You're you're just going to a whole nother level. And 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 mature, you know, uh, spiritually. You're just hitting a threshold, and you're just skyrocketing, and you're going to mature like so, so much faster than all the knowledge that you already have. And what they're saying is that to make sure that you listen more um, to your guides, you know. But actually, I think for me, this is clairaudience. This is about actually being able to start hearing them. So, all right. So they, these are your readings for the day, children. <laughs> <laughs> And did anybody want to talk about anything that was actually important and, and a real topic? Lucifer? Lucifer? Can we talk about yes. Lucifer? Yes. <laughs> yeah, because right. I want to get the story. Oh, yeah. Speaking of the story, I got the story, but I'll message it to you because I don't know if I should post that, but I'll message you the story. Okay. I got it. Okay. But, um, yeah, Lucifer. I got my little white board. <laughs> Um, basically, okay, like, like, what did you want to know 
Uh, start all about... from the beginning. From start from the, from the beginning. Okay. Um, <laughs> basically, you know, like uh, for, in the last chat, if you guys were watching, I was talking about Lucifer and the art and how she fell. Um, I, I'm going to do a quick recap because I'm going to get into that again. But basically, you know, like I said, in the war in the Bible, the one third of the heavens fell. The Ba'at part fell, so that's one third of the heavens. Then obviously, you know, they fell below. But when Lucifer fell, she actually created Malkuth. So this one was actually created by Lucifer, which is also known as Earth. Earth is Malkuth. And it's actually the biggest part of the tree of life. It actually it ha it has its own tree. It's called the Earth tree, but that's a whole other topic on its own. But basically with that, um, we have, like I said before, um, the elementals are Lucifer's children. Um, when it says in the Bible, God let there be light in the book of Revelation, it really means, you know, when this fell, the first kingdom to arise before humans and aliens and all that stuff was the fire kingdom. That's what it means, God let there be light. And it's the creation of the element of fire. Now, once you created the element of fire, like um, all the elements of the kingdoms are actually just lower versions from the, the, higher, uh, the higher kingdoms. So, like, you would have fire, water, wind, earth, which, you know, most people would know, but before that, there were the four cosmic forces, which um, would be gravity, weak nuclear force, strong nuclear force, and electromagnetism. Um, each one of them, obviously, uh, gravity will be, you know, the higher version of Earth. Weak nuclear force is um, water. Strong nuclear force is fire. And electromagnetism is wind. Now, what happened when she created a uh, physical fire, she actually took cosmic fire and just made a copy of it. So, um, it's not, it was like, how can I explain this? It's like... It wasn't lightning, but it was, it was like taken from lightning because lightning can create fire as lightning is ionized fire. So, you know, she just created the physical fire from that, from the more cosmic version of fire. But like with the elementals, like I said, you had the fire kingdom was first. After that, you had the wind kingdom. Then there was the water kingdom. Then there was the earth kingdom. The earth kingdom, you can trace back to what, what we call today at the dinosaur age. That you could call, it, uh, you know, still traceable to the earth kingdom because there was, you know, beings you know, just like us, who who were just in the Earth Kingdom, and the same thing with the other ones. Now, when people think of, like, fairies and stuff like that, fairies are actually extremely, extremely old. Like, they're actually a lot older than a lot of these aliens people are talking about now. And, you know, with fairies, you know, people think, you know, they're weak and they're, you know, petty, but they're really not. They're really not. Like, because, like, th there's different <laughs> there's different rankings in them. Because, like, you would have, you know, like, actual elemental fairies. Like, what, what people are more accustomed to is, like, the little, you know, little people with, like, the wings. Those would just be a, a hybrid version of Earth and Wind, Earth and Wind fairies. Like the original Wind fairies look like cloud people. You know, they had the fire fairies, which were like, you know, um, more towards Oceania, where it's like, you know, like, like a little bit bigger, but they have flaming wings. Like they all rank in different, you know, um, variations. But I'm trying to think what else I have to add to that about the elementals. Um, I mean, each one of the kingdoms has like their own rankings. Like when you have this, the, um, the Sea Kingdom, you have different rankings. You would have um, one of the highest rankings in a kingdom. In a sea kingdom, would be the Darians, and those are basically like um, jellyfish uh, humanoids. Like it's, it's hard to explain. Like, but they're, they're like jellyfish people. It's best I can explain it. And they're extremely old. As we know, in our current society, jellyfish are one of the oldest species to exist that we know so far. So, like, it, it all goes really way back when. Like, there's, there's actually a lot more to the story than people really know. I got, I got a question. Yeah. Can you explain, Can explain how Lucifer how is Lucifer a female? Is what was that? I didn't hear that. Can you explain Can how explain Lucifer how is a female? Oh, because um, she's a so like it says in the Bible, she's associated with the star in the east. That's feminine energy. And, you know, Venus is a feminine planet, and Venus um Venus's element is Earth. Earth is also feminine. So she was basically, you know, a representation of, you know, just a feminine force in general. But when people, like I said, when people confuse Lucifer for Satan, they're actually two completely different beings. And like I said before, they were, you know, they were actually lovers. I'm not going to get too deep into the love story, but basically, you know, uh, Satan corrupted Lucifer's ego when she fell, and her ego self is known as Malkuth, which, you know, as what we know now, is kind of corrupted. So that's, you know, a kind of a representation of, you know, um, the more darker powers corrupt than what she has made. And actually, you know, Malkuth is actually in a prison right now, which, you know, it's, it's a whole other subject on its own, but it's called quarantine, which I think we should talk about in the next video, which basically quarantine is basically like a little shield 
around this, which actually stops you from um, like seeing higher forces and lower forces. It, it, it protects you, but it also you know makes you a, a little bit limited in a way. <laughs> I know Dai's laughing over there, but I'm at the chat. Like, I'm at the chat. I'm at. It's like a little shield, and basically you know as time goes by, it's lifting. And you know as we've noticed, you know since 2001, the world has not been the same. If you notice, you know a lot of more you know chaotic things have been happening. That tends to happen because you know when the dimensions are thinner, both good and bad have easier access to this world. So you know, I mean, I don't want to go too deep into that and start scaring people, but you know, basically as time progresses, there will be you know a bit of changes. Uh, you, you probably will start to see you know a little bit more um, interdimensional creatures as time goes by, but you know. That's that's just a basic understanding without me going too deep into it. That's a whole yeah, another, I um, video. Yeah, I want to yeah, oh, your mic. Um, I want I want you to talk about this um the um, the prism thing and and being like quarantined. I think you said I'm just totally I'm totally fascinated with this whole the the tree of life. I'm just like I love it. So well, <clears throat> well before we um go into that, I just wanted to add on to what he was saying about um the veils being thin and interdimensional beings being here. One thing you have to remember though is that the earth has not been where it is in the recorded history of human life. I mean human beings have never been where we are right now with planet earth. So it, it's not, I mean when you think about it being scary, it's not exactly scary, it's just that we've never done it before so that's why it's scary. It's like anything else, you know, it's fear of the unknown. So. That's yeah, and I think he said that that he I, and I think that's what he just said too, which I really really love, is that now now everybody's just working with light and dark, and I think that that's probably what's gonna throw people off a little bit is that if you're on the darker side and you're having to work a little bit more with the light, that's you know that can throw you off kilter, and 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 the opposite is exact is true also. And so I think that kind of can throw a little fear into things when, when you're used to working a certain way, but now you're forced to, with the thinning of the veil, you have to work with both equally. And so I think that's going to, I think a lot of people are going to have a hard time adjusting to that, but that once they do, forget it. I think it's just going to, it's just going to like skyrocket. When people think of light and dark, I think they get mixed up with good and evil. Mm -hmm. is, where is, when there's good and evil in both. So that's the one thing that people mixed up. When you're working with the dark, you're not working with, like, quote-unquote evil. I really don't believe evil, but you're not working with quote-unquote evil. You're just working inside yourself, within yourself, you know, going to every place inside. You're basically just putting yourself first, and that's not necessarily evil if you if you know yourself and know the reasons why you're doing it. And when you're working with the light, you're more so working out. You're still working with yourself a little bit, but you're more so working with outside yourself, with other people a little bit more. Right, and I, that's, I, I saw your video yesterday, and I thought it was so perfect. It's probably like one of the last couple of videos you've done are like, like some of my favorites. And, um, and you talk about something that I think is really important for people to do is getting into that shadow work, you know, mm -hmm. getting into that shadow side of you so that, um, you know, you, you can't, you shouldn't work so much with helping other people and doing all these other workings if you haven't gone through every, you know, turned yourself inside out and really know yourself completely, well, all the good, all the bad, everything, um, before exactly. you try to work with other people. And so when I saw that video, I was like, that's, you know, I, I love that video. That's what, uh, basically what dark work is, just knowing yourself. You know, Nicole, they always say, know thyself. That's basically what dark work is. But I do have another question for John, and I know I'm always asking questions that you probably can't answer <laughs> in public. But with the quarantine, because what I do know is that there's actually two bears on the uh, tree of life that are missing or hidden. Do you think, is it possible they'll show up as the quarantine lifts? Is that is it possible as one of the reasons about we're in quarantine? What was that like? What was the last half of it? I could it like broke up. I couldn't hear you. Um, I, like I said, this um, here's actually. Lock, 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 lock his mic. Lock, I think. Lock, 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 lock. Okay, yeah, that's better. Okay, there's two spears at the bottom. There's two spears that's supposed to be there. Um, below the other two, but above my poop. There's two spears that's actually missing or hidden. 
Um, with the quarantine being removed, do you think those two spirits will finally be revealed? Or like, do you have any information whether that's part of the quarantine, why that's not missing off of the tree of life and off of our knowledge of the tree of life? Um, are you talking about this one right here? Like, is this you human thing? Um, because I know there's two different versions of the tree of life. One has the ah, uh, and one doesn't. And the one that doesn't, no, you know, it's no, not that. Uh, yeah. so if you go, I'm, it's hard. Go so okay. so right above my tooth, but before you get to your summit, there should be two spirits on either side. Two spirits on either side. Um, I mean, honestly, the uh, I think I know what you're talking about to a certain extent, but like the tree of life, like this is just like a really basic, basic tree of life. Like this is actually considered um. Incomplete because it's mostly masculine, and I mean there is a little, little tiny sentiment, but it's mostly masculine. Like the deities, like the angels that rule the rule the um the sephiroth are mostly masculine, but it's incomplete. There's, there's actually the comedic tree of life, which actually has a lot of different sephiroths. And the tree of life actually, when it comes to like I said uh, um about the angels of being at Chokma, like the dark and white angels, the dark and white matter angels, there's actually one that goes sideways, like a tree of life that goes sideways, and that and that has to do with time. Those are ruled by a different kind of angels called um, the Apocalypse. Now that has, like I said, this is this, but imagine this extended to over here, like sideways. That's a whole nother step of, and that's supposed to let you for you to understand time and whatnot. Um, but also like go southeast, south, you know, southwest. Like this is just like a set of basic understanding. But when quarantine does, like it's on next, um, I said, will certain step be revealed? Not really about separate screen, but about the certain energies that just disconnected from us because the currents are the currents are not on. When quarantine does lift, yes, we will have a lot of um, new energies coming in, and a lot of new stuff will be shown to us. Because they got like when the Atlantean and the uh, Egyptian um, currents go back on, you know, it's it's gonna get a little like a little sci-fi. But I mean, you know, I'm just getting you know basically understand without going too deep. But it it also has to do with your with your perception. And okay. like, like um, people like when they're like, oh, waiting for like um a whole um end of the world thing, like a whole big, you know, catastrophic event. That's when you like, you're actually supposed to already be, be prepared. Like you're not supposed to be waiting for something to happen because that's when the stuff is gonna happen. You know what I'm saying? Like you're supposed to um see things and how it changes in stages. But you know, like most people like they you know they like to wait for big changes stuff like that. That's actually you know not not the right way to do it. But to answer Diet's question, I mean, that's the best I could say. You know, like when quarantine does lift, there will be a lot of new energies and a lot of new stuff um, shown to us, good and bad. But, you know, I mean, it's just all about people's perception. And, um, I mean, that's basically what I'm going into, like, another topic. Because, I mean, I could go <laughs> deep into it, but I don't know if I should <laughs> do okay. that. But, okay. I mean, that, that's basically it. I mean, I'm trying to think what else I can add to that without explaining too much. Yeah, I think that's basically it for that. Cool. Okay, so I wanted to add something to that, Daya, because I think I think you brought up like a really interesting question. And um, what I'm thinking is what I think is fascinating. What I think is fascinating is that he brought up that chart is mostly like um, a masculine chart. And I feel like the um, the two spirits that you're talking about, for some reason, I feel like those are, they remind me of the Lilith, of, um, you know, something coming in uh, feminine that hasn't, that's not part of that chart and that will be revealed, you know, once the quarantine is over. I don't know why I feel that way. Yeah, that's actually, I, I know, that's actually something I'm going to, I should talk about because I know exactly what you mean by that, but that's, I'll leave that to another day. But there's actually like um a new um uh, female messiah, like you know most of the messiahs that we've seen like in, in the in the stories, you know, with all masking like you know Zeus, Christ, um you have you know Krishna, Vishnu, like you know most of the messiahs were masculine. There's, there's actually you know the new messiah, and I'm not gonna mention her name, but she's actually supposed to be a representation of you know new feminine power, the feminine force rising. But like I said, you know I'll explain more about that in in another day. All right, guys. How long have we been on? <laughs> uh, about an hour. Oh, that's it? Oh, 
Oh snap! All right, cool beans. So I think I think we're I think what I want to do is let's wrap it up and then you know we can we can hang on a little bit afterwards for anybody who wants to just hang out for a little bit. Okay. Right. Mike, they're, they're, yeah, you hear it? They're going crazy. All right, peace out.